law will come against ambiguity. Oh, yes. That with simplicity your word will come forth. Amen. Understanding is granted to your people. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll be teaching for some time now, the whole of this month, on we see Jesus. You know, the point is, there is a temptation to see other things. There is a temptation to be distracted unto Moses. There is a temptation to go after types and shadows. There's a temptation to go after things. We serve Christ, we don't serve things. We don't serve bring holy water. No, holy, there's nothing like holy water, holy cloth, holy oil, nothing like that. Now, people may practice it, but that does not make it right. No matter how far a lie travels, it does not make it the truth. Can I say that again? No matter how far a lie travels, it does not make it the truth. And so, Hebrews and chapter 13, which has been our text, verse 8 and 9, we'll take it up from there, and then we will validate the fact that Jesus is our message, and that our emphasis is on Jesus. So he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. There's a warning, he said, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. And now we emphasize that the word doctrines here is in the plural, which means it could be the doctrines of the devil or the doctrines of men. He said, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meat, what we we'll eat, or those religious things people observe, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Unfortunately, we have a church world that has men still on bottles. You know what I mean? They still use feeding bottles. They are grown-up men. They have been in church for 20 years, for 10 years, for 5 years, and yet they are not growing. They are left at the babyhood stage. The reason is when men are not properly taught, they will go after meat. They will go after other things. If you please turn with me in Romans 14 verse 17 and see what Paul said. In the course of our teaching, we have mentioned this. Romans 14, 17, we had mentioned this before and I want you to see it. Romans 14, 17. He said, for the kingdom of God is not what? It's not meat and drink, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy. We are in the world. So the kingdom is about what the Lord Jesus provides for us by his death, burial, and resurrection. It's not after all those ceremonial things, the do's and don'ts. Do this and don't do that. Okay, eat this, bring clothes, bring water, bless water, whatever you call it. Lord, those things, we call them types and shadows. Would you repeat that word for, after me? Say types and shadow. Now I'll show you how Paul explains that because the church in Corinth had been taken aback with that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 1, he began to warn them because men were indulging in Moses' law. Men got indulging those things. He said, moreover, brethren, would not, moreover, brethren, would not have you ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Next verse. He said, and we're baptized unto who? They were baptized unto who? And that's the challenge. Our people are still baptizing to Moses. Their emphasis is on Moses. Everything they do is on Moses. How? In the cloud and in the sea. Next verse, quickly. It said, and did all eat what? The spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual? For the drunk of what make this spiritual? It means that Moses came with a type and a shadow, but that type and shadow was pointing them to Christ. He said, and did all eat, drink, and uh, the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual world. When they went through the wilderness, did you see rock following them? It means their practices were a pointer to somebody. Can I say that again? He said, they did drink the same spiritual for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was what? Christ. So when they went through the wilderness, did you see Jesus following them? It means their practices, they were pointing men to Christ. Now the point here is, now that Christ has come, should we still continue with those practices? Because the substance has come. And that's the challenge of modern day Christianity. They say it's in the Bible. But it's in the Bible. To whom was those things spoken about? Now who were those things pointing to? It says it's in the Bible. 
Everything in the Bible requires explanation. And that is why the Bible is not like your literature you read. You don't need interpretation. The Bible requires interpretation. And that's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to, to be ashamed. Unfortunately, the church world does not want to be taught. We want acts. We want all oh, power, power, receive, jump up. Hey, bring oil, hey, pour it on your head. Bring water, pour it, bring a kerchief. No. We are not different from witch doctors. And yet we preach against them. Can I say something? The church world laughed at the white garment church. There is nothing the white garment church did those times, those days, that the Pentecostals are not doing. We have done and we have even surpassed them. We used to call them cherubim and seraphim. So we call them kerosene. And that's how we, you know, we want to mock them. But all their practices, the church has done it over. We don't want to stick with the word of God. We want someone that will just fix it for us and we'll go. But we must give our attention to the word. So Paul taught the church in Corinth. He told them that all those practices, they will all point us to Christ. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Let me give you again. To the church in Rome, he wrote to them in Romans chapter 15. If you please, we'll read 3, 4, 5. And he warned them again, telling them the implication. Please follow me, I'm taking you. For even Christ, please not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Verse 4 now said, he said, for whatsoever things were written a full time, we're written for what? So, were we to practice those things or to learn so that it will point us to the person? That we, through patience and the comfort of scripture, might have hope. So, these things were written for our learning. So, we can see how that Moses will tell them, bring this in those days. Now that all of those bring this, bring that, was pointing to Christ. I give you a typical example. Please church, pay, be patient with me. John chapter 3. It's not part of my note this morning, but I need to give you this example. John and chapter 3. Please just be patient with me. In verse, um, uh, verse from verse 12, John chapter 3, from verse 12. Are we there? He said, if I have told you earthly things, this was the conversation he had with Nicodemus, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? He was reproving him. Next verse. Quickly, we are reading down. He said, and no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man which is in heaven. Everybody read now. And as Moses did what? Even so, so, what lesson was Jesus teaching? That all that Moses taught them was pointing to me. But modern day church, we have seen a church where the pastor carried a rod up. He said, any sickness you are going through, look at this rod. As Moses lifted up the rod and they were here. I'm lifting this rod. So we are worshiping that rod. That is idolatry. It was a type of what Christ was going to do. That when men look up to Christ... And they will be healed of whatever infirmity. So we are not called to practice Moses. We are called to follow in the full step of Christ. That Moses was pointing men to Christ. And we validated that here in this church. How that Moses told them that a prophet like unto me with your father raised among your brethren, him shall you hear. And that prophet was Jesus Christ. So G Moses never spoke of himself. Moses spoke pointing men to Christ. And the duty of every pastor is to point men back to Christ. It may offend people, but I won't stop teaching the truth. The truth of the matter is, I shouldn't point you to me because I cannot help you. My work here is to teach you Christ. And in teaching Christ, I will cause you to focus on Christ. Once your focus is on Christ, he's your Lord. And if he's your Lord, he can take care of whatever it is. Somebody say amen to that. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to gather you back now that all of the statements of the Old Testament they pointed you to Christ. First Peter and chapter 1 verse 10. 10 to 12. First Peter chapter 1. And look at how Peter taught what I'm teaching now. Paul taught it that that rock that followed them was Christ. He taught it from, those, from the book of Romans that it was written for our learning. And then from this place we find out. Now look at how Peter taught it. He said of which salvation the prophet have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace eh, that should come unto you. 
Christ is God's grace. He's God's gift of salvation that should come. So all of the prophets of old, their prophecy was to point you back to Christ. Searching what? Or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand. What was their testimony? The sufferings of Christ. And what again? The glory that should you know what just happened? Peter collapsed the entire Old Testament scripture into two. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. That is death, burial, and resurrection. So the message of the Old Testament test of the scripture was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So anything we preach from there, outside of these things mentioned, I want you to know that we are preaching heresy. Because Moses was pointing you to Christ. Peter, in his assertion, came up. He said, all of those things that happened, he said, the prophets of God, they prophesied, their prophecy was one. And what was their prophecy? Christ. And we that have seen the revelation of Christ, we that have come to receive this Christ, our message should not be Moses. You see, the Old Testament, they were reading forward. We, when we read backward, we read in view to confirm the confirmation of what has happened in our lives. Am I communicating here? And this is the challenge. And some people get offended with me. Pastor is. So you don't have any other message than Christ. The truth is who died for you. If you agree that Jesus Christ died for you, then he's our message. The message is not uh, every demon of your father's house. Every deliverance from the tree. Every man pursuing. No, that is not the message. The message is the savior. Once you know the savior, you are saved from all these things. In Colossians 1, verse 12, 13 and 14, and look at how Paul, writing to the church in Colossae, you know, he never made this church, he wrote to them from the prison, and he began to admonish them. He said, giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in life. Let me look at your neighbor and say, being born again, you have an inheritance. Is in the saints. That's what the Bible says. Look at the next verse. Who hath I feel some people have a problem with English language. What do we have after the word heart there? Is the delivered in the present tense continuing or past tense? Are we delivered or we are about to be delivered? Does a believer need deliverance? No. A believer doesn't need deliverance because he has been delivered. Oh. Who, you see, he began by saying giving thanks. It was saying, I, it is worthy of praise. This is my urology to you. I want to eulogize you because of what you have done. You have delivered me from the kingdom or power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we have left kingdoms. There, are, there were kingdoms we found ourselves, but today we are in the kingdom of his dear son. Look at the next verse. I'm excited. So the believer must be taught this. Who, next verse, please, verse 14, is uh, in whom. That word whom talks about the person. That's the preposition. In whom we have what? Redempt. Through the forgiveness of sin. Friends, your sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. Look at your neighbor and say, do not let any man condemn you. My sins, your sins have been forgiven. Not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ has done. It is in whom? It is in him we have redemption. Through his blood, we have the forgiveness of sin. Not through our kneeling down to cry. Not through our prayer. It is in the talking of what he has done. Friends, you are as free as the air because of what Christ has done. Don't let any man place shadows on you. Don't allow any man place types on you. Don't let any man say, go and bring sin offering. The sin offering that was offered for you was Christ. Don't allow any man tell you, go and bring a trespass offering. Because we see here such practices today. Pastors can cajole you. Take advantage of your ignorance and tell you for what you have done, go and bring a trespass offering for you to be forgiven. You see, it is an expression of their ambition and their inordinate passion for money. Because what Christ offers freely, don't corner people by taking money from them. To allow them enjoy what Christ offers. Somebody getting angry with pastor? If you are angry, say amen anyway. I, I don't care. Just say amen. We just say amen to those who are angry. We don't have a problem. 
Nobody is in church today. I said I don't have a problem with that. You can still say amen again. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. So what is the testimony of the scripture? John 5, 38 and 39. What is the testimony of the scripture? Now when we talk about the scripture, what are the scripture? Class, what are the scripture? Genesis to where? Malachi. So if Genesis to Malachi, let me say something. Let me say something. When we say Genesis to Malachi, they are the scripture. It means that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are not the scripture. From Acts of the Apostles to Revelation, they are not the scripture, but they are the fulfillment of the scripture. Can I say that again? They are the fulfillment of the scripture. When Paul said, search the scripture. Okay, let's do this. I'm getting ahead of myself. And you have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent, him you believe not. They were, Jesus was rebu 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 rebuking the Pharisees. Everybody read with me. This is a testimony of the scripture. Search what? Where, where are we reading now? Where are we reading? John chapter what? Five? So when the scripture was read, uh, when, when Jesus was saying this, was there a book called the book of John? No. So it means the scriptures would have been Genesis to where? So he was telling them, go and search Genesis to Malachi. Is that okay? Now, search the scripture. For in them, you think you have eternal life. Because the Pharisees were busy reading the scroll. And Jesus said, in, as you read it, you have a feeling that you have eternal life. Isn't it? But look at what he said. And they are they. What are the they? Thank you. You are following. What are the they? So they are they. Which word? So what was the purpose of the scripture? So everything written in Genesis to Malachi, they were written for whose sake? For Christ. So it would be wrong if we use those passages of the Bible for another thing other than Christ. Can I say that again? It would be wrong if we use them for other things because there is a disclaimer here that the scriptures were written for him. So it would be wrong for you to give it another interpretation. Oh, I want to do a stone service. When you are coming to church tomorrow, bring five stones. It's another gospel. The same way that David kicked Goliath with five stones. When you are coming from your house tomorrow, come with five stones. The Lord just spoke to me. They have used the Lord just spoke to me to deceive those who are gullible. Can I say something? The word of God you have in your hand is more prophetic than any God spoke to me. Because the word of God itself is God's breathed. The Bible says all scriptures are given by the inspiration of so the word of God is inspired already. So for me to say, God just spoke to me when you are coming to church tomorrow, come with five smooth stones. Every enemy of your father's house, every enemy of your mother's house, anyone who say you will not marry, anyone who say you will not have children, anyone who say you will not enjoy. And because men are caught in the web of challenges, they easily fall for those things. Am I communicating? I want to, I want to, I want to show you this. He said, they are they which testify of me. So the scripture does not point you to any other person other than who? Christ. And well, Peter said it, that all of these things, they were spoken ahead of time. And it was about Christ. So the Bible must be used for the purpose for which it was written. Otherwise, it would be an abuse. Like my Moro once said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. And unfortunately, we, you see, from this same Bible, we have seen occult men make some quotations from the Old Testament. And people say it worked. It is not about whether it worked. Is it true? Because there are things that are not true that works. Magic works, but is it true? Which doctors, they, they have result, but is it true? And that's why when Paul rebuked the church in Philippine or, or uh, Philippi in chapter 4 of, and verse 8, he was saying whatsoever things are lawful. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. You know, he gave the criteria for whatever you are going to give your heart to. Okay, look at it. He said, finally, brethren. That is to say, this is the summation of what I'm saying. Whatsoever things are what? 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 If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise, what should you think on? You think on the things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. You are not called to think on everything. Oh, am I offending anybody this morning? 
Okay, I want you to understand that whatever it is that you go through in life, the Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are an overcomer of whatever is challenging. Why? Because you are born of God. You don't need seven days candle around you. You don't need to go to the cemetery to pray certain prayer. You don't need what from people call midnight prayer because people have entered into occult. One practice I saw in the Bible, the Bible said Jesus will pray all night, not because he had a problem. Most times, some of the things we do is because we think we have a problem. And if you see the practice of Jesus, the Bible says early in the morning he wakes up to pray. But you see, most people in the, night, in the midst of, I want to do midnight prayer, they do it in fear. And once they wake up to 12, oh, every enemy, every, why are you enemy conscious? Be Jesus conscious. He loves you crazily. He delivered you from the power of darkness. He translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. You have redemption in him. Through his blood, you have the forgiveness of sin. Therefore, no man can lay any charge against you. Let me say I have good reports. I have things that are honest. I have things that are lovely. I have things that are pure. Those are the things I think upon. Stop thinking about, will I live this year? Will I not die? People are just dying. And so what? Is your name people? If there's anybody that will remain, you'll be among them. Amen. Think on good things. Think on what Christ has done for you. And stop focusing on the negative thing. You are called to learn Christ. You are not called to learn those things. Can I say that again? Help me say, I'm called to learn Christ. Not to learn those things. My emphasis should not be on types and shadow. Let me quickly give you a twist to what I've been trying to pass across to you. In Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2, and this will blow your mind. You say, but pastor, I've read it before, but I need to point something out from there. He said, God in command, who at sundry times and in diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by who? How did God speak to our father from Genesis to Malachi? Through the prophet. Oh, good. What did he do? He spake. Everybody say, he spake. I want you to underline that word, speak. Had in these last days spoken. If he spake, that's not the end. But if he has spoken, he has no other thing to speak. You didn't hear what I just said. He spake, it means it was not true. But in these last days, has spoken unto us by who? So, who, who is God's voice on earth today? Jesus. God does not speak to the prophet any longer. He speaks to us now in his son. So, Jesus is the voice of God on earth now. So, stop looking for God's voice. Because God has spoken. And the place I see what God has spoken is in his son. So, his son is his voice to me. His son is his word to me. Whom he had appointed heir of all things... By whom also he made the world. So God's word is God's voice. Say that with me. Then say to me, Pastor, prove that to me. Say, Pastor, prove that to me. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. John chapter 1, 1 to 4. Look at what the Bible says. Come on, talk to me now. John 1, 4. Media. In, oh, come on. John 1, 1 to 4. That's what I meant to say. John 1, 1, 1 to 4. Thank you, you're doing a great job. John 1, 1 to 4. He said, God, in the beginning, how? Was the word, and the word, and the word. So what's God? How do I locate God? How do I come? Through the word. That is word. It's his voice to me. The same was in the beginning. Uh-huh. All things. Now that word now is a person. Him has come. Take note. That's why I said, ask pastor, prove it to me. That word now became a person. In him we are made, all things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made. Next verse. In him was and that life. How did you and I get life from God and light from God and life from God? Through him. Verse 14 verse 14. Look at what the Bible is saying. Verse 14. Verse 14. Ooh, I wish you can be this fast. 14. Okay. I'll read from my Bible. Uh, 
You join me to read. Want to go? And hey, hey, that word that was with God in the beginning became flesh. What human? That word found humanity. That word found humanity. And that humanity we find in who? What's the name of the pig? Jesus Christ. And the word was made flesh. Look at it so that you don't assume it to be something else. He said, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of full of what? Grace. That is truth. It's not too deep. His grace, which is truth. Verse 45. Verse 45. Verse 45. I love this. This is intriguing. So, God's voice is God's word. And that God's word was the one that was made flesh. is Christ and he lives in you today. Glory be to God. So, the Bible provides me evidence to have fellowship with the God that I have received that lives in me. So, the Bible gives me the guide. Everybody look at me. Look up. Philip, find it and see it unto him. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and in the prophet. So, what was their writing about? If I go through the Old Testament text of the scripture, whether the writings of Moses, that is Genesis, uh, Genesis Exodus, uh, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, and then the other prophets, and Psalm, look at it. It says, Philip, find it, Nathanael, and see it unto him. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and in the prophet did write. Who is the person? Jesus of so, what was the writing of Moses and, uh, and the prophet all about? Christ. About Christ. So, when I'm reading the Old Testament text of the scripture, what bias should I have? So, Christ should be the bias of my reading the Old Testament text of the scripture. Am I communicating? Yes, so, I could go to the Old Testament text of the scripture and start shouting, hmm, Atalia. Atalia, in the year Uzziah died, Uzziah, every Uzziah in your life will die. Something is wrong with you. Because the Mo Moses and the prophet, look at how Philip told Nathaniel. Philip ran to Nathaniel. He said, Come, 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 come. We have found him. He is the one Moses wrote about. So the writings of Moses will point every man who have read very well to Christ. But when you didn't read it very well, you'll be seeing your village. You'll be seeing spirit of marine. You'll be seeing spirit of uh, witchcraft. You'll see... You, am I communicating? Oh, church. Let's read it together. Give me NLT rendering of this. NLT and message. Please be patient with me. Because we see Christ. What is... We see Jesus. That's what we've been teaching on. And Philip also found Nathaniel. I said, Nathaniel, bia, 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 godi, bia, uh, bia, kita, kita. Bia, quickly. For our international audience, I spoke in Igbo language. And what I was saying by Bia is, come, come quickly and come and see what Moses wrote about. The prophet wrote about Jesus. So, their writing points you to Jesus. And anytime I read their writing, and they, whatever I read is not pointing me to Jesus, something is wrong with my, my, my religion, my lenses. Okay, let me read anything. Philip went to look for Nathaniel and told him, we have found the very person Moses and the prophet wrote about. His name is Jesus. Period. I think this is so succinct. He said, we have found him. So it means my reading of Moses and the prophet should lead me to who? Now, otherwise, I'm doing another thing. So man can bring his opinion to the word of God. Can I say that again? Man can read his opinion to the word of God. So, I could just come up one morning. Not me. Hey! Every Uzziah in your life will die. That wicked uncle is Uzziah. Have you not seen it in the book of Isaiah? In the year Uzziah died. In the year Uzziah died. And they will die. Am I using the book of Moses where? Talk to me. Am I using the book of Moses where? Am I using the prophet where? Because if I use it where, where will he point me to? Message rendering message rendering. Because I, we must see those who are skillful in the use of the scripture. Your skillfulness is in that it will point people back to Christ. And I'll do two more readings before I close. 
Message said, Philip went and found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote of in the law. The one preached by the prophet is Jesus. So if the prophet preached Jesus and you are reading their, you are reading their writings and you are preaching something else, change your theology. Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. Too many scriptures? No. A man who is teaching chemistry will not use the Bible to teach you chemistry. He will use chemistry book. If I'm teaching Bible, I should use Bible to explain my point. Not what we see today. They, I, see, I don't care who gets offended. The pulpit is not where you teach business. That is why university have business school. Don't go and borrow courses from, uh, 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 from the university and bring it and be looking for Bible to explain it. The Bible teaches Christ. If you like, get offended. That is what the Bible preach, points you to. Hello? Okay, what if I came to church today and I want to teach? I'll say quantitative analysis 101. And people like Pastor Barry, does, they don't like mathematics. They will get turned off. True of us. Except if they pay you money for it. You will not learn it. <laughs> I don't want to talk. Can we focus on Christ? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I have nothing to say. The book of the generation, the son, the son. Uh, so, where do we find Abraham? Where do we find David? All those books, who were those books meant for? Look at the next verse. So when I don't know how to use the book where, I will make the book read a different thing. And quite a number of church people are deceived. Just shouting, eh, my, my pastor, my bishop, my pastor, my papi. No. You must check the Bible. The Bible is our standard. Not the number of cars I have. Not the clothes I wear. Not my ability to speak good English. It is not linguistic artistry. It is ability to teach the word of God rightly so. Abraham begat. Isaac begat. Jacob begat. And where do we find this? In the book of the generation of who? Jesus Christ. So when I go to the Old Testament text of the scripture, and I'm reading about Isaac, Jacob, this, this, all of those things. When I'm reading, I should read with the bias that there is, a, there is something they want to point me to. True or false? Who is the book written for? So should I use it for something else? If the book was written for Christ, is it okay if I teach business from it? It's wrong. Because Christ is not a good businessman. I will offend you now. What was his trade? Carpentry. What was his trade? Why was he doing carpentry work? He found his father doing carpentry. He followed suit. And if you ask Jesus to teach you business, you will fail. Because he never learned business. But when he was of age, he started teaching the scripture. Because to that end was he born. But for means of survival, that is why you are a Christian, but you still do your business. True or false? That's it. We're not telling you be safe and fold your hand. If you fold your hand, the Bible says, he that does not work should not work. Hunger will deal with you. If you keep begging, a time will come, the people you beg, they will start running from you. And nobody lays hands on you for money to come. I hope you know. We will lay hands on you to cause you to be creative. But it's how far you go with your creativity that determines how money comes. Unfortunately, we have used money to validate the gospel. But can I shock you? The richest men on earth, most of them are not Christians. So if how we judge your Christianity is by your money, what about those who don't have Christ? As a matter of fact, Big Gates said, there is no God. He told some folk who went to evangelize him, he said, the God you are talking about is in my pocket. Because he saw that the church world is advancing the gospel, and that gospel is advanced in the direction of money. And he told them, that God you are looking for is in my pocket. And Jesus is not angry with him, because we have not presented the gospel well. We have presented the gospel in the line of money. The gospel is about who? Nobody is talking. I want you to say it confidently. The gospel is about who? Who do we preach? Who do we see? And Paul, Philip said to Nathaniel, we have seen him. I'll read the last scripture 
and then we'll close for today. I have somewhere else I'll be preaching today. John 5, 45, 46, and 47. Is it clear today? John 5, I quoted. 45, 46, 47. John 5. Thank you, Lord. So my knowledge of this Christ now and finding out what he has done in my life is what gives me the authority to stand against everything anti what he has done for me. So I realize that sickness is not part of what he did for me in his redemption. So I stand in the understanding of what he's done for me. I rebuke sickness. Now, my understanding of the fact that he has enabled me that anything I put my hand to do prospers, that is what formed the basis of my prayer in that direction. But now I see also that based on what he has done for me, my wife, my children, they should live healthy. They should live having provision. And based on that, that is what informs my prayer in that direction. But essentially, Christ is not things. Christ is about a knowledge of God and he is the best explanation, best definition, best literacy of God. So my literacy of God is in the understanding of who Jesus is. Would you say that with me? Say my literacy of God is in the understanding of what Jesus reveals. So to be ignorant and to be an illiterate will be not having a proper understanding of who Jesus is. And we have so many illiterate Christians and illiterate pastors with all respect. Hallelujah. Did I offend anybody? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. Who is that person? Whom you trust. Next verse. For had you believe who? What would you have done? Uh -huh. For so what was Moses writing? Jesus was the one speaking this. Because if I take you through John 8, you'll be so shocked. He said before Abraham I was. Why was he saying that? He was saying that Abraham you are talking about. I existed before Abraham. So Abraham did everything he did in view of me. Am I communicating? So much so that the Jews say, come, you, we knew where you were born. No? Is your father not a carpenter? He's a small rat. Don't let me enter you. <laughs> I will run, I will run, enter you. Praise God. I will run, enter you. Small boy yesterday. Do you know Abraham, our father? Where were you born? I will run, enter you. Where did they tear your eye there? <laughs> Praise God. He wrote concerning me. So when I carry the book of Moses to study, I should be seeing my village. What did I say? I should be seeing Christ. When I'm reading the prophet, I should be seeing who is pursuing me. I should be seeing Christ. When I read the Psalms, I should be seeing, hmm, unto thee, oh, 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 oh. Jay, every enemy of my father's house. Aro, 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 aro. No. Which arrow? Let God arise. What that happened in the resurrection? His resurrection made the enemy. For it was not possible for grave to hold him. He when he had when he was raised by the glory of the Father, all the enemy forces scattered. So for me to be praying that prayer now is foolishness. It shows my illiteracy of what Christ has done. Because what the psalmist wrote about, he was writing about the resurrection, foretelling that his resurrection will cause enemy forces and their, you know, claws over us to wither. And when Peter reported that in, in Acts 2, he said it was not possible that death should hold him bound. It was not possible. So all this... Let God arise conference. God will arise in your life. If God starts arising one by one for us, for how long will he arise? We have 7.8 billion people on earth. So on Monday he arises for Pastor Barry. On Tuesday me. No, assume me. And then he starts arising for all of them. Now what after arising for you? He now get to the number 100 person and there's another case for him to arise. He will come back again. He will arise. Don't know. Something is wrong. So our theology must be a theology of Christ. Am I communicating? So let God arise is not a prayer. Hmm. Oh God, arise. 
Arise. Arise. Let all your enemy, because we are enemy conscious, but we forget that that is a fulfillment of a scripture in Christ, that his resurrection has brought enemy forces down. So then I cannot exercise my authority. In the name of the one that brought you down, you foul spirit, orchestrating all of this maneuver, I command you to desist from it. Because my Savior has defeated you. He has arisen over you. That is why I say go in my name. Because in my reputation, in my accomplishments, in my conquest, in my victory, remind them and put them where they belong. Having spoiled principalities and power. He made an open show of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, I can stand today now. I speak over your body. Everything God has not planted. Whether they call it sugar diabetes, whether they call it high blood pressure, I, whether they call it arthritis, rheumatism, they call it pain in the joint, whatever it is, malaria, whatever they call it, it says something is wrong with a particular part of your body. By the authority of what Christ has done, we command that the devil ceases in his oppression. In the name of Jesus, I speak health and wholeness over you in Jesus' name.